This is problem number five from section 4.6. It says the six foot wall shown here stands 22 feet from the building. So you can see the six foot wall, 22 feet from the building. Find the length of the shortest straight beam that will reach to the side of the building from the ground outside the wall. Meaning the wall is kind of holding this beam up, <clears throat> touching the ground here, touching the building here. What's the shortest beam uh, that you could have there? Because obviously you could have different angles here for this beam, which would create different lengths. So they want to know what's the shortest length there. It's a good problem, tough problem. Uh, the way to think about this is to think about this with a large triangle and then a small triangle. Now for the small triangle, <clears throat> we have six foot wall, we have X, and then we have some sort of um, length here, but we know that that length is, if we use the Pythagorean theorem, that length is really root X squared plus, uh, well, it'd be this squared plus this squared, so it's root of x squared plus 36. All right, if we square that. So all I'm doing is I'm labeling this x, right, this little piece, and drawing that triangle, and then saying that obviously this side here, which is part of the beam, is root of x squared plus 36, because x squared plus uh, 6 squared equals this side squared, square root this side, you get that. So I hope that makes sense for the little triangle. The big triangle, though, <clears throat> uh, the big triangle has a beam that we'll call B here. This length we know is X plus 22. And then we know that this side of the building we'd have to label it something else. And, but in this problem, we don't really care what's the building height. We don't care what that height is. Uh, because what we know is this angle theta is the exact same angle for this. How do we know that's true? Well, if we draw a triangle inside of a larger triangle and we still we're still using this angle, well, it's the same angle between each, meaning these are similar triangles. If you remember from... Uh, geometry, you if you have similar triangles, you can write ratios between their, uh, their different side lengths, um, and those ratios are all going to be equal because they're similar. So we're going to write ratios between this side length for the small triangle, this length here, and this length. And we're going to write that by saying, all right, we know B over the root of x squared plus 36, because this is similar to this, these side lengths are similar, we can write that ratio, and we know that ratio has got to equal the exact same ratio of this side length with this. Now, if we started with the large triangle being on top, we need to make sure the large triangle's side length is on top for this one. So this is x plus 22 over that side length. So I hope that makes sense. If you're making this triangle, this smaller triangle, larger and the angle is still the same, well, the ratio, if you divide the side lengths, the ratio between each side length has got to be the exact same because you're making it larger in all those areas at the exact same rate. Now that we know that these two are equal, we can solve for B and we have an equation. So we're going to say B equals and I'm going to simplify this a little bit and write this as x over x and 22 over x. I'm going to write this as 1 plus 22 over x. And this, when I multiply it across, will just be root x squared plus 36. So this is the answer to the first part of this question, which is basically, can we come up with an equation for that beam length? And that's the equation for the beam length using the similar triangles. Now, how do we uh, find the shortest straight beam? Well, what do we do? We take the derivative of the beam, and then we set that equal to zero, and we try to find the minimum. 
So let's go ahead and come up here and say B, we know that B equals this equation. If we're going to take the derivative of B, that's going to be B prime. And remember, we're going to use U, because this is a product rule, so U equals 1 plus 22 over x, u prime, the derivative of this, well, first of all, we could rewrite this as 22x to the negative 1. So this derivative is going to be negative 22x to the negative 2 when we take that derivative. All right, move this up, x to the negative 1, bring the negative 1 to the front, that's negative 22, subtract 1, x to the negative 1. Negative 2. And then write that as negative 22 over x squared. V. V is root x squared plus 36. But V prime is going to be, uh, when we write this out, this would be, this is to the 1 half power. So bring the 1 half to the front. x squared plus 36, right, the inside function, to the negative 1 half when we subtract 1. But this we have to do times the derivative of the inside, right, chain rule. So times 2x, and this is just 0, so times 2x. Now we can bring the 2x to the front, and 1 half times 2x, that cancels, that will just leave you with x. And then we can also, so we'll write this x, and then we'll say x squared plus 36 to the negative half. And then we can write that as x over root x squared plus 36. So that's just some simplifying of those derivatives. Okay, we actually have to do the product rule now. So to do this product rule, and I'm actually going to just cross this out. I'm, I need more space. We're going to go b prime equals, and we're doing u prime times v, so that's negative 22 over x squared, and we're multiplying it times v, so times root x squared plus 36 plus u, 1 plus 22 over x times uh, v prime, which is x over root x squared plus 36. So that's actually, uh, there's our derivative, but we need to simplify this derivative so we can use it a little easier. Uh, let's go ahead and simplify the derivative by distributing first. So we're going to have negative 22 root x squared plus 36 over x squared. Distribute here, we're going to end up with plus x over root x squared plus 36. And then plus, the x's cancel when we distribute here, so we just end up with plus 22 over root x squared plus 36. All right, let's keep simplifying here. So we're going to get b prime equals. Now this part makes it look like it's going to be less simple, but I actually combine some stuff together here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to take and we're going to multiply. Well, you know, let's just try this out. We're sitting right here. We can, we can simplify this down. But you know what we could do is we could just set this equal to 0 and start multiplying by some stuff and canceling stuff out. I think that might be a better route. Let's try that out. We're going to say 0. Remember, we set the derivative equal to 0 equals all of this. So I'm going to multiply this top line by x squared. So 
So each of these by x squared and this by x squared. When I multiply 0 by x squared, it cancels, and I'm left with negative 22x squared. Oh, not x squared, because that cancels, right? So the x squared cancels, so I get root of x squared plus 36 plus x cubed over root x squared plus 36 plus 22x squared over root x squared plus 36. I'm just going to cancel denominators here. I think that's probably an easier way than just going through and simplifying that derivative. So I'm going to multiply now by root 30, a root of x squared plus 36. So I get 0 again when I multiply by it. When I multiply this by root x squared plus 36, I get negative 22 x squared plus 36. When I multiply this by root x squared plus 36, like this fraction, that cancels and that cancels, so I'm left with plus x cubed plus 22x squared. I hope you see why I multiplied by those denominators because that made that problem much simpler. So then I'm going to say 0 equals negative 22x squared. Negative 22 times 36 Let's go. So negative 22 times 36 gives you negative 792 plus x cubed plus 22x squared. This and this cancel, so I'm left with 0 equals negative 792 plus x cubed. Add this over now, we get 792 equals x cubed. Do the root of that, uh, or uh, cube root of that, so we get cube root 792 equals x, so x is going to equal, and the calculator will obviously put that in as 792 to the 1 -third. And that gives us x to be like 9.2521. But remember, we're not trying to find x. We're trying to find the beam, right? We're trying to find the beam length. So once we find x, we plug it back in, and we can find the beam length. So we're going to say that the beam length is going to equal, and I'll just use this cube root of 792 because I'm going to use the whole number anyways. So I'm going to say 1 plus oops, 1 plus 22 over cube root 792 times the root, and this will be cube root of 792 squared. So cube root of 792. 792, might have to slide this over, squared plus 36. Okay, so I'm just putting in the cube root of 792 into each of those. Now, obviously, in your calculator, we're not going to use that cube root of 792. I'm not going to type that over and over again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this number here that I just found, and you'll see that as I go through. So I'm going to start here with 22 divided by this. So 22 divided by that answer. I'm going to add it with 1. I'm going to take it times the root. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to grab that answer again and square it. And then I'm going to add 36. And our answer for this problem is 37 point, this would be two, they, I think you have to go either one or two decimal places, I don't remember which. But if they go one, obviously it's just point two, but point two five, and this is in feet. So the beam length 
shortest beam length from touching the ground, touching the wall, and touching the building, the shortest beam that you can have there. Oop, better draw that over. The shortest beam that you can have there is 37.25 feet. I hope that makes sense. I hope this part in the middle makes sense. We just canceled denominators by multiplying by x squared. And obviously if you have zero here, when you multiply by x squared, that cancels. And then that's what we did with the root as well to get this part. 